Well, good morning, my friends. Jennifer here. This is Monday Fire episode number 102. And I have a bunch of notes sitting here, but um, I kind of feel like as I'm preparing and just had some quiet time with the Lord that um, I might just go a little rogue on the notes and so just kind of talk from the hip. So I want to talk about today uh, why it's sometimes easier for us as humans, as women, as business owners to kind of hide than it is to take a stand. And the reason that this is fresh just on my mind and in my heart is because if you follow me on Instagram, you may know that I've really been trying to take a stand for getting masks off of my children. And, uh, and by the way, regardless of if you disagree with me on that, listen, we can still, um, I'm glad that you're here. Um, we don't need to fight and argue about it. We can agree to disagree on some things because that's what mature, um, women of God do, you know? So, um, and we're all, by the way, we all have thoughts and opinions that come out of our own personal experience and our own personal knowledge, et cetera. So with that being said, if you disagree with me on, you know, the kids and maths, thank you for still being here anyway. Okay. So, um, you'll know that if you follow me on Instagram, that I've really been taking a stand, um, to try to get other women who feel the same way, um, to really take a stand for their children. Uh, because, you know, the Bible calls us to be a voice to those who have none, right? And, um, and we as parents are our children's number one, and sometimes only advocates. Okay. So, um, so anyhow, I've been talking about, you know, if you, um, if you are in agreement with what I'm saying, and if you're also concerned about next year, and you're also concerned about, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z, that's not what this podcast is about. Then, then make the calls, write the emails. Here's who you can call, here's who you can write. Okay, so what's interesting to me is that I have women saying, I'm so proud of you for standing up for what you believe in. You know, I'm just so scared to take a stand to which then I've been pushing back just a little bit and saying, so tell me, tell me why you're so scared to take a stand on this matter. Like what, what do you think, you know, is, is going to happen or, um, and there have been other topics by the way, that I've talked to enough women and in particular entrepreneurs about taking a stand that I know that, it, I mean, it's not just this topic. Okay. So the topic is not masks on our children. The topic of this podcast is why sometimes it's so hard for us to take a stand and it's easier just to kind of keep our mouth shut or shrink down or not share our opinions or, um, you know, just not say anything or stay in this neutral space. And what I have seen, um, in the last, you know, 15, 16 months since the pandemic started is I actually have seen this remnant of women um, who have in the past been very much like the people who would not really share a lot of opinions and who uh, really do prefer to kind of hide and stay in the background that have really started coming out and, um, and really speaking up about you know, whatever side of whatever issue, whether it's the pandemic or political or social or whatever. And it makes me super proud, by the way, of you, especially if this is not how you are naturally wired, because this is not how I am naturally wired. Regardless of what you may think, I am an introvert. I am an Enneagram three. So we like to keep everybody nice and happy. I'm an S on the disc personality profile, which means I'm like a golden retriever in the animal world. Again, just want to keep everybody happy. Can't stand the idea of people being upset with me, et cetera. So it's not like me to be very opinionated publicly. Okay. But the other day I was in the war room for my better way program and I'm um, doing some prayer time. And there was one of the women that are in there with me, one of my clients who said she's, and I wrote it down. She's normally very comfortable being unseen and in, in the background, and she's scared to take a stand. And this is what I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, if you're in, if you, uh, if you can relate to that, if you two are like, I don't want to take a scan. I'm nervous. Um, I'd just rather say nothing. Okay. So I want you to really, first of all, consider why it is that you don't want to take a stand. Okay. And I think that there's three main reasons. Number one, it feels super vulnerable because you know that there will be people who take a stand on the other side or feel differently than you or want to argue with you. You'll get some pushback. Um, so it feels really vulnerable, number one. And number two, I think that we're scared that um, people are going to disagree with us publicly 
or privately, and then we're going to be in an argument or number three, you know, that we will just totally be canceled or there'll be kind of that mob mentality. Okay. So those are the three main reasons I think we're scared to take a stand. So regardless of why, um, you know, you're nervous to take a stand on whatever topic you may feel passionate about, like deep down on the inside. And I want you to think about like the things that you'll talk about privately with your best friend, but you're afraid to stand for publicly. Here's what I wanted to say. All of those come back to fear. And the fear, here's here's what I want you to get from this entire podcast. When you were scared to take a stand, the fear is actually, the root of that is actually rejection. We're actually scared of being rejected. That's what the fear is actually coming down to when we're afraid to take a stand about something. Um, And so I just wanted to remind you that Jesus himself was rejected. First of all, the Bible says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. That's what Jesus said. And, um, and so I think it's really important that we understand the root of rejection, how that lie gets planted there. Uh, for so many of us, I think it comes from um, rejection, perhaps as a child, if you're someone that has struggled with an orphan spirit being rejected by a parent, maybe a biological parent, what have you. Um, it's interesting how that will come back up and rear its ugly head as a grown up. Also, if you're somebody that struggles at all with a vain imagination, meaning, um, you know, you worry about things that are probably not logical, probably not going to happen, but your imagination tends to kind of run wild. Sometimes we'll convince ourselves that if we do something as simple as taking a stand for our children, that, uh, you know, the very worst thing is going to happen. We're going to lose every client. We're going to be canceled on the internet. We're going to, you know, X, Y, Z things that'll probably not happen. Uh, but we can actually like convince ourselves that just standing up for something that we really believe in, um, is dangerous. And the truth is it usually isn't. Now, listen, I want to tell you also that if you feel like God is calling you to stand up for some things, I think you can do it in a way that is winsome. I think we can do it in a way that's still salt and light. I think that we can do it in a way that doesn't feel like we're giving people on the other side, if you will, uh, you know, the middle finger. I think we can do it in a way that is still respectful um, and that we still have respect for people who feel and think differently. Um, I think that taking a stand with still maintaining humility is something that is possible. With that being said, I think that when you take a stand, you also need to remember that even if you do get a little bit of pushback, you are fully capable of handling that. I have publicly shared some of the knuckleheaded um, DMs that I get with you guys on Instagram, not to like call out those people. I usually always cross off their face or their name so you don't know who it's coming from. But just to let you see that, look, this is what some of the pushback that I get and you're able to handle it. I'm able to handle it. That happens way less times than what people probably think that it does. And the Bible says that more are for you than against you, by the way. It also says that if you feel like the Lord is asking you to take a stand on something, um, I want you to remember where it talks in the Bible about how the Lord goes both before us and is our rear guard. I don't have the uh, the Bible reference to tell you exactly where that scripture is at right at the moment, but it says he goes before us and he's our rear guard. So essentially you're like a Jesus sandwich. You are, he's in the middle or you're in the middle. He's before you, he's behind you. So if you're taking a stand, I want you to know you're not alone. That, that fear, that root of rejection, especially if it's coming from that orphan spirit, you will feel alone. And that's a lie from the enemy to keep your mouth shut. It's a lie from the enemy to keep you silent. It's a lie from the enemy to keep you small. And sometimes friends, when I look at my children right now, my four precious children, and I, my prayer for them is that they're wired in a different way than their mother, that they would not be growing up with that orphan spirit, that they would not have a vain imagination, that they would stand up when they see injustice that they would see something, say something when, (laughs) that they would say something when they see something that is not okay, that they would defend those that have no defense, that they would stand up for what is right, that they would speak truth. But how can we as mothers in particular 
Pray that for our children, but not demonstrate it in front of them. How can I expect Noah to speak truth on a college campus when mom's afraid to do it on a podcast? How can I expect Ava to defend people that she sees being bullied at school when I'm not willing to go to bat for my own children publicly about the mask issue? See moms, we have got to remember that our children are watching us and they're learning what taking a stand looks like. And we can show them how to do it in a way that is still salt and light to the world, we, where we are still standing for our personal convictions, where we are still defending biblical concepts, where we are still standing up for things that we feel personally called to, um, situations that the Lord is asking us to be bold on. We, we have to be able to do that in front of them because there is no class at school to teach them this. There is no class in middle school or high school on how to take a stand. That is not being taught, friends. And in case you wonder about the curriculum being taught at public school or private school, probably for that matter, I don't know that that is being taught. So where are your kids going to learn it? They're going to learn it at home. They're going to learn it at home. And so listen, sweet dear friend on the other end of this podcast, this got a little more passionate than I was expecting. I'm not going to lie. If you feel like you are super passionate about whatever topic, because here's the thing, God's not going to talk. He's not going to call you to talk on everything. He's not, but he's going to probably cause you to be interested in talking on a few things. Take a stand, take a stand more for you than against you. God goes before you. He's also your rear guard. The things that you're worrying about are probably not going to happen. And even if they are, the Bible says that the Lord is your vindicator. He will vindicate you. Recognize where that fear of speaking out is coming from and get rid of that fear of rejection of man. Because when God is for you, who can be against? Oh boy, I hope that this just ministered to somebody's heart this morning. And this is not um, telling you to go be all willy nilly out on the internet and be, you know, crazy um, and ugly and, and, uh, and talking about things that God's not calling you to. We need wisdom in this hour, right? We need wisdom. The Bible also talks about when we are faithful to ask God for wisdom, he will be faithful to give it to us. So be wise in what you're taking a stand for. Be winsome, but also be courageous. I am so rooting for you. I can't wait to have one of you DM me on Instagram or to share this podcast and tag me and let me know that this was for you today. I'm honored to be here with you week after week, friends. I'm rooting for you. Until next week, be blessed. Bye-bye.